Johnny Dollar. Mr. Dollar, my name... My name is... Yes? Well? My name is Fred Ackerloyd. Ackerloyd? Yes. Well, what insurance company do you represent, Mr. Ackerloyd? No, none, Mr. Dollar. It's just that I, I'm the only... Well, you see, I'm calling from... Yes? Hello? Mr. Dollar. Well? What's this all about, Mr. Ackerloyd? I... Well... Yeah? It's about a murder. Go on. Yes. Well, who? Where? His name is... His name was Phil Bernasconi. Bernasconi. Well, go on, sir. No, no, I, I can't. Why not? Because you did it? No, good heavens, no. Believe me. Tell me this. Do the police know about it? Well, yes, of course, but what they don't know... What don't they know? They don't know who did it. But you do, is that it? Yes. Well, who was it? Come on, come on, Mr. Ackerloy. No, no, I, I tell you, I can't. Well, why not? Well, don't you see? Don't you understand? It would be like signing my own death warrant. All right, now you listen to me. No, no, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Well, what do you mean? Hello? Hello? I wonder what that was all about. The CBS Radio Network brings you Bob Reddick in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Philadelphia Mutual Liability and Casualty Insurance Company, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the informer matter. As I've mentioned several times in these reports, informers play a mighty big part in the solution of major crimes. Obviously, the man who called me on the phone was one of these. And I, like a darn fool, didn't contrive to keep him on, make him tell me what he knew. Also, of course, I had no idea whether the victim he named was an insurance client or not. But if not, why phone me? Expense account item one, ten cents for a phone call to Pat McCracken at the Universal Adjustment Bureau. Always a mine of information where anything having to do with the insurance business is concerned. Well, the only way I can find out, Johnny, is by contacting all the companies that subscribe to our adjustment service. Well, then maybe you better, because you I see, have a... Uh, you see, a company doesn't report a death or a loss or whatever to us until a claim has been filed. Yeah, I know, Pat. Now, this guy's name was Phil or uh, Philip Bernasconi. That's right. And the man on the phone said he was murdered. Yep. What was his name? Well, a kind of funny one. Fred Ackerloyd. Now, he told me just what I told you and then hung up on me. Why didn't you try calling him back? Where? He isn't listed in the directory. Then I'll tell you what you do. Well, I did, Pat. What? And the chief operator said there isn't even an unlisted number for him. So maybe he called from a phone booth. Or from out of town. But where? He started to tell me and then quit. Uh, you better forget it, Johnny. Maybe it was just some crackpot making a nuisance of himself. No, Pat. On this one, I've got a hunch. A real hunch. Oh, you and your hunches. And what if this victim isn't insured with one of our companies? Well, then why did Ackerloyd call me? I haven't the least idea. But until we get word from one of our companies of a murder... That, I've got an idea. A man named Philip Bernasconi, plus a request for investigation, a specific request for your service. Pat, haven't I seen a stack of -of out-of-town phone directories down there at your office? Sure. And do you have any idea how many of them there are? So what? Oh, now, Johnny, Johnny, this is ridiculous. Look, uh, too much time on your hands and don't know what to do with it? Maybe. Well, why get all excited? Get yourself into an uproar when you don't know for sure. Well, why bother? Why not? <laughs> Item two... A dollar twenty for a cab to Pat's office in the Spear building on the square. And there, over his protest, in a little cubbyhole, in back of the switchboard room, 
I started going through phone books, directories from all over the country. Now, if you ask me, Johnny, somebody just made up that name. Maybe? Hacker, boy. Look, I tell you again, this is ridiculous. Well, why don't you stop yammering and give me a hand? Crazy phone call that could have come from anywhere in the United States and because some nut said there was a murder somewhere. <laughs> hey, look. Oh, oh. A directory from Vineland, New Jersey. It's my old hometown. <laughs> what do you know? The name Ackerloyd in it? Take a look. Oh, a name like that in my own hometown, you think I wouldn't have known about it? Here, you see. Academy Dog and Cat Hospital, Ace Heater Company, Ackenback, Ackerloyd, Ackerman, A... Huh? Ackerloyd? Well, let me see that. Ackerloyd Frederick. I'll be done. 2424 East Elmer Street. Okay, Pat. Oh, but now, Johnny, this is ridiculous. You said that. Am I on expense account? Expense account? You certainly are not, unless we get the word from one of our companies down there. Well, when you do, let me know. I'll be at the, uh, well, whatever hotel there is in Vineland, New Jersey. Item three, nineteen dollars and twenty cents. Taxi to Bradley Field and a plane to Philadelphia, PA. And during the flight, I began to wonder if maybe this time Pat wasn't right. If this wild hunch of mine wasn't pretty ridiculous. Nonetheless, item four, there in the city of brotherly love, is fifty dollars deposit on a rental car. I crossed the Delaware River Bridge. I forgot the toll, so skip that. And drove down to the heart of sunny southern Jersey. I registered at the Vineland Hotel on Landis Avenue, dropped off my bags in room 313, and then started out through the lobby to hunt for the address of Ackerloyd on East Elmer Street. But the clerk at the desk stopped me. Mr. Dollar. Yeah? I tried to call you up in your room. Oh? His telegram just arrived for you. Mm hmm He yes, sir. Thanks. Now, let's see. Well, from Pat McCracken. Says, I don't know how you do it, Johnny. Johnny, but you were right. It was murder. You're on expense account. Repeat after me, please. What do you want when you need brand? What do you want when you need brand? Reliability. Reliability. Now, what do you get in Kellogg's All Brand? What do you get in Kellogg's All Brand? Reliability. Right. Hi, this is Dennis James to explain why Kellogg's Way is the reliable way to get the effectiveness you want from brand with just half a cup a day. See, Kellogg's All Brand is the real Battle Creek formula, the one that millions of people depend on. And they depend on it because Kellogg's All Brand contains more vital brand bulk to help you keep regular. It's low in calories, and it's mighty pleasant eating, too. Kellogg's All Brand comes in crisp, toasted shreds that have a wholesome brand muffin taste. I think you'll like it. So be sure you remember, for the effectiveness you want from brand, get reliable Kellogg's All Brand. That's what you get in Kellogg's All Brand. Reliability. The telegram there in the hotel in Vineland, New Jersey, was brief and to the point. I don't know how you do it, Johnny, but you were right. It was murder. You're on expense account. Contact Branson at Philadelphia Mutual Liability and Casualty for details. Regarding murder, murder of Philip Bernasconi. Sign, Pat McCracken. Bad news, Mr. Dollar. Listen, did you know a man by the name of Philip Bernasconi? I yeah, sure did, and I wasn't one bit surprised when somebody murdered him a couple of days ago. How come? Well, he wasn't what you'd call a bad sort, not anymore. Trying to get to himself in that nice little house of his over on Pear Street. Well, tell me. Well, nobody in town could figure out where he got the money to retire him, only being in his early 50s. And then the word got around he'd piled it up in some kind of rocket, and he didn't do so good by some of his pals. Well, you know what they say about those kinds. Where's the phone booth? There, against the wall. Thanks. They say that sooner or later those gangsters will always get even, they do, and it looks to me like this time they finally did. What I mean is, you know...
My call was to Harry Branson, my ever-worried little pal at Philly Mutual. John! John, thank goodness you called. Yes, Harry. Pat McCracken wired me. You must come down here right away. Right away, John. Well, as a matter of fact... Don't bother stopping here in Philadelphia. Go right on down to Vineland, New Jersey. Well, that's where I am. There's been a murder, and you must solve it immediately. A client of ours by the name of Philip J. Berlusconi insured for some $30,000. Harry. At first, the police thought it was an accident, which would have meant $60,000 because of the double indemnity clause. Now, clause. listen, will you? But the chief, uh, the police chief, tells me that... Uh, what do you say? What have I had a chance to say? You're where? In Vineland. Well, why didn't you say so? Harry. But as long as you are, well, go to it, John, and I wish you luck. Uh, just give me the answer to the all-important question. Uh, yes, what is it? Who's the beneficiary of this insurance? Well, you see, in spite of Berlusconi's rather shady past, he, the uh, the beneficiary, was willing to forget it. Uh, let him live in peace down there. The beneficiary's name? He even promised to protect Berlusconi from this very thing that's happened. His name, Harry. Name? I told you, Berlusconi. No, no, the beneficiary. Oh, 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 of course, yes. It's the man you're to contact. His name is Harvey Renzoli. Renzoli? Yes, he's the chief of police. He's what? Who? Renzoli, Renzoli. But I told you the chief of police. And the beneficiary. That's right. So see him, John. I'll see him right away. Sorry, Harry. Sorry. He's the one man I don't want to see. What? Not yet. Renzoli was not only Phil Bernasconi's beneficiary, but the chief of police who'd promised him protection against his old gangster pals. I got into my rental car and headed east on Elmer Street, a block south of Landis Avenue. By the time I got to 2424, I was practically out in the country. The house sat alone, except for one across the road. It was a rather shabby little affair, badly in need of a coat of paint. An old man in overalls was pounding away at a shaky-looking mailbox out in front of the place. Uh, no, 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 no. Howdy. Howdy. I'm looking for Mr. Fred Ackerloyd. Uh, I'm kind of deep. Are you Mr. Ackerloyd? No, 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 no. I'm the owner. I'm his landlord, but this here's where he lives. Okay, thanks. Uh-huh. I ain't seen him around today, but I think there's somebody in there. Okay. Oh, uh, you want to know anything about him, I'll be in my own place across the street. You hear me? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yes? Something I can do for you? The man at the door was tall, young with a dark complexion and smooth black hair. His eyes took me in, all of me at one quick glance. Those eyes were pretty sharp. And so was the hat that he wore. He was hardly that kind, but I caught a whiff of perfume as he opened the door. I said, is there something I can do for you, mister? Yeah, I'm looking for a Mr. Fred Ackerloyd. Oh, Well, come in, come in. Thanks. You're Mr. Ackerloyd? Is your name Dollar? Johnny Dollar? That's right. Mm Mm-hmm. Then he did get through to you. He? That's right, Ackerloyd. Oh? That means we'll have to kill him, too. What? After we get through with you. No, you don't. Oh, yes, I do, baby. Just take this gun of yours. You know. While I go and huh? Oh, that crazy landlord. Lucy. Lucy! Yeah, what do you want? Listen, that fool landlord heard the shots. He's coming across the street. Now tell him it was a backfire. Chase him away. I'll go and bring Ackerloyd here so I can put him away alongside of Dollar. Okay, tell me. Yeah. And then you and me. We can get out of this berg. Commander, 
Welcome aboard. Try new king-size Philip Morris Commanders. New because the tobacco in them is vacuum cleaned. And the cleaner the tobacco, the better it tastes. Yes, the cleaner the tobacco, the better it tastes. Philip Morris Commanders are made by a new kind of machine, the Mark 8, that takes rich, full-flavored tobacco and first... <laughs> gently vacuum cleans it, then rolls the cigarette fully, evenly, cuts the ends clean and firm. The result is new Philip Morris Commanders with the cleanest tobacco ever rolled in a cigarette. Try a pack. You'll get a full, round, king size of solid smoking pleasure because... The cleaner the tobacco, the better it tastes. Noticeably better. The commander, welcome aboard. What do you mean, shot? You must have heard a backfire from a car, that's all. Uh, maybe so, maybe so. Well, sure, you know, with that bad hearing of yours being so deaf and all. Oh, but didn't I, I see a man go out the back way? Well, sure, it was that man you showed the way up to the door a couple of minutes ago. Uh, funny that he, he didn't drive away in his car, eh? Well, what's funny about it? Uh, look, go on, I'm busy. Huh? I gotta clean up Mr. Ackeloyd's house before it gets too dark. I ain't seen him around all day. Where'd he go to, miss? How should I know? I talk loud, I don't hear I good. I said, how should I know? And I wish uh, he'd tell me when there's somebody coming in here to clean Look, one. will you leave and let me get my work done? Oh, sure, 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 sure. Boy. Boy, that Tony had to leave me here to... Hey. Are you still alive? I, I am. Oh, no. All right, now be quiet. That blood all over your shirt. And a couple of pretty sore ribs, too. Tony thought he killed you if he finds out. He'll find out, all right. No. Hey, come on, now let go of me. You're, you're some kind of cop. Now let go of all me. All right, huh? now just take it easy. Now look, I hate to sock a woman. Okay, okay. First, we turn off these lights in here. Now listen. I, I didn't do nothing. I, I'm not one of that gang. Gang, I'm uh, only a friend of Tony's. The gang that knocked off Bernasconi. Well? Yeah. No. Listen, Tony will murder me if I talk. Why? Why did he kill him? Because they found out he was... He was going straight. They found out he was down here palling around with a cop. And where does Fred Ackerloyd fit into this? Come on, no. Paul. He, he was Phil's friend from the old day. And he'd come down here to warn him, maybe help him? Yeah, yeah. Now let me go. I had nothing to do with it. One more question. Oh, no, please. Tony will kill me. You don't know him. Where did he go? To pick up Ackerloy, to bring him back here and knock him off? I don't know. I didn't know. Oh, please, honest, I don't know. I looked at they're coming up the road. Tony. And Mr. Ackerloy all tied up. Listen, Mr. Pooh. No, no, no time to listen. No. Here. What are you doing, my skirt? Why had it so help me? Please, look, for given evidence, maybe you get me off the scene. Let's see. All right, now down on the floor. What are you going to do? Get down. There where I was. And be quiet, you understand? Yeah, sure. It was the fastest rapping job I ever did in my life. And I hoped the gag would keep her quiet. Outside, in the semi-darkness, I could see Tony pushing along a man who was gagged. Had his hands tied behind him and his ankles hobbled with a piece of rope. I crossed, went back at the door, crouched there, and waited. In you go, Ackerloyd. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You just lay there where I can. Hey, what's the matter with some light in here, Lucy? Lucy! Lucy, where is he? What happened? Where's that Wes Dollar? Where is he? Right here, Tony! Oh, you don't... Oh, get get, 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 get Hey, you're too weak, ain't you? You're too weak after that shot in the belly. <laughs> okay, Dollar. This time, I don't miss. Now, you just lay still, baby. Well, I push this barrel right up close to your head. Where I don't make too much noise. The way I did with Bernasconi. And I'm gonna do with Ackerloyd. And 
maybe Lucy, too. After I get through with you. Shut up, Lucy. I knew I shouldn't have brought a dame along. Now you shut up. All right, now, Dollar. You are first. Watch him, boys. Cops! All right, you dirty... Okay, okay, boys. We're under control. Right, Chief. Okay, sir. Uh, you must be Johnny Dollar. Chief Renzoli? That's right. You okay? Well, what do you think? Well, you just lie there, take it easy. You don't look too good. Sure. But what brought you in like the U.S. Marines? Well, ever since Sir Sarkaloid. You see, he used to be bookkeeper for a mob up in Philadelphia. Oh? Yeah. So ever since he came here and started hanging around with Phil Berners-Coney, um, Phil was going straight, Mr. Dollar. He was... Uh, a friend of mine. Yeah, so I understand. Well, anyhow, I've uh, kind of kept an eye on Ackerloyd. Uh, untie him, one of you boys. Take out his gag. Yeah, sure, Chief. When Phil was killed, well, uh, Ackerloyd was clean. He just wouldn't talk. Not to me, anyhow, but I felt he knew who did it. I also figured whoever did do it might come down here to make sure he couldn't talk. Yes, which is exactly what happened. But how did you know who I am? Phone call from that insurance man up in Philadelphia. Harry Branson. Mm -hmm. Said you were coming here. Told me what you look like. I see. So when the landlord for this place uh, lives across the street... Well, he uh, telephoned me a while ago. Gave me your description. He said he thought something funny was going on here. Oh, here he comes now. Well, I told you, Chief. I told you there's something wrong about all the people here in Mr. Oh, 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 oh all these bodies, all the... Oh, oh, oh. Well, Chief, shall I bring him to? Well, well, why not let him rest a while, Chief? He certainly earned it. Yeah, I guess he has. I understand that Tony recovered. Well enough to be tried and convicted of Berlusconi's murder. Lucy, his girlfriend, gave enough evidence against the mob in Philly to enable the police there to round them up. Where she is now, I don't know. Like Fred Ackerloyd, she moved away. A long way away. Expense account total, including services of a doctor for the bullet crease in my side, $115.20. And believe me, I'll welcome a nice fat fee on this one. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Special sweeps Class C of mobile gas economy run, placing first and second. The Buick Specials averaged 25.09 and 24.67 miles per gallon and ran on regular gas, as certified by the United States Auto Club. The Specials victory represents a clean sweep among compact cars with V8 engines and automatic transmissions. But that's not all. In the grueling 2,000-mile run from Los Angeles to Chicago, in every kind of driving condition, over mountains, plains, rough roads, and smooth, the Buick Special proved the most savingful of all automatic shift V8 cars entered, regardless of class. Yes, with the Buick Special, you get gas savings like the smaller cars, yet more go than many full-sized cars. Plus, Buick styling, Buick comfort and luxury. And you can own a Buick Special for less than you'd pay for most models of the low-price field. Take a fun run in the car that got 25.09 miles per gallon to win both first and second in Class C of this year's Mobile Gas Economy Run. The Buick Special at your dealers now. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Well, next week, my job is to protect a wanted criminal from, believe it or not, a policeman. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Reddick, is written by Jack Johnstone. 
Produced and directed by Bruno Zerato Jr. Musical supervision by Ethel Huber. Heard in our cast were William Redfield as Tony, Dawson Zerby as Pat McCracken, Ralph Bell as Fred Ackerloyd, Terry Keene as Lucy, Bill Lipton as the clerk, and Larry Haynes as the police chief. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Art Hannah speaking.